Put me on the Celestine prophecy. Nothing here is stopping me. Consciously or bodily, low energy don't bother me. Love is my priority. So my vibrations 444 sonically. My brain working out. Meditation, my cardio. They hit it from us in the books. You provided the audio. Audio. Welcome to a new season, a new episode of Mental Wealthness. Um, another show under the flagship of Black Fly on the Wall. I got my boy, Timothy Webb, my boy, Lee. Um, Lee, introduce yourself. Uh, Tim Webb, um, Lee to go on Instagram. Um, brand new, full entrepreneur, uh, real estate, logistics. Yes, sir. Airbnb, interior design, a little bit of everything. So nice, appreciate nice, you nice. having me, bro. Absolutely, man. Today's episode is all about... Entrepreneurship, spreading your wings, you know, when knowing when to take that leap, um, and and knowing what really when it's the time it's time for you to make that pivot, right? Um, from your mainstream, your nine to five, and you're well known for your brand more than a nine to five, um, which I think is essential for all the nine to fivers to understand that, you know, you can identify yourself through your career, but also live outside of your career and and and, and tap into your dreams and your aspirations. Right. And so that's why I think more than nine to five is, is really dope. Um, and I think as for you, you recently just just left corporate America and spread your wings and really taken on entrepreneurship and real estate and Airbnb and all those things um, at 100 um, percent. Tell us about like Tell me about that experience, man. Of just recently doing that. Yeah, bro. And then, honestly, this is the this is the first drop of me even mentioning it. Nice. Um, period. It's the best way so, to do it right yeah, here. No, absolutely. Yeah. So. Um, really just standing on the brand now, right? Morning at nine to five. And um, I think it was really uh, destined um, to get to this point. And a lot of my mentors kind of really dropped gems um, to me before this process even all played out. Um, but really, man, I was really preparing myself early on since 2019, right? Um, investing in assets. Um, residual income, and um, honestly, being able to sustain um, on the entrepreneurship side without a nine to five prior to leaving. So it, it, it balanced itself out. Nice. Um, a lot more hands on and scaling now, but you know, I'm figuring it out along the way. All right. So, like, you know, with mental wellness, mental wellness is all about tapping into the mental health side of conversations and the financial literacy con- yeah. t- side of conversations. So, how was it um, leading up to you leaving corporate America as far as you mentioned that you were kind of planning ahead of time to yeah. making sure you, you move around assets and you obtain assets and yeah. you create this stream of income as if it's functioning on its own. Talk about that process since 2019 up until 2023 um, of preparing yourself for this pivot. Yeah, bro. No, I, I think it was really um, chess, not checkers, bro. Um I think when I first jumped out here, I was really testing the waters, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And thank God that I feel like a lot of decisions that I made were the right decisions to make. Um, And I bought bought stuff cheap, um, but I was buying stuff in areas that were not developing or slow to develop, right? So a lot of that, um, I offloaded and took that income to buy in areas that are in prime uh, real estate areas or developing areas to where um, my properties can only increase in value, Mm -hmm. right? So um, I recently uh, posted a lot of uh, projects where I did uh, a duplex with a a old grocery store auto shop on the back that I turned into a a studio. Dope. Uh, Purchased it for 95,000. And uh, recently, it appraised for four hundred and twenty-five thousand. So, yeah, yeah. So it's a play. Some, I pulled some equity out of that, <laughs> and um, nice. Now, honestly, bro, I just really just been rinsing, repeating that process, and that's just one of the properties that I uh, nice. refinance. So, how many properties do you have? Um, man, honestly, I feel like when I get put on the spot like that, <laughs> I always like try to calculate it in my head. Uh, but I have probably like fifteen or so doors. Nice. Um, I had twenty three at one point in time, but uh, I sold a lot of them in twenty twenty one and uh, twenty twenty two. Nice. So, yeah. So, what is the process of um, buying right? I think that's a I think that's a concept yeah. that. That is, that has been uh, floating around on social media and on YouTube. Yeah. Um, and it's really, really what it is is it's a, it's a, it's a way that we we have to really put forth the concept of making sure we're not buying 
because mm-hmm. of it's the most popular thing to do yeah. or we're not buying because um, our friends are buying, but we actually finding good deals yeah. that fit best for our budget and fit best for our short-term and long-term goals. So explain to the people what buying right is. Yeah, no, I always uh, talk about, especially in my ebook, um, smart investments, smart buys, right? I think so many of us get hung up on that property that we just fell in love with and we have to have and it just the gray walls and the backsplash and pleasing and we just we need that property right now right Mm -hmm. um whether when interest rates were low or like they're uh through the roof now you know what i go after is the ugliest house on the block right and i look at um the ugly house that is in a particular area or zip code that i have researched and see that there's development going on in that area right because that ugly house is going to turn into Sure. Um, some money at mm-hmm. some point. Um, and in and, and doing that, um, I found properties that had, you know, um, breweries that were being built around it. Okay. Um, when you start seeing sort of sidewalks and the streets sort of changing. Okay. Or definitely a Starbucks pop up. Right? Then you know. <laughs> there you go. Uh, what time it is. And, um, <laughs> honestly, in doing so, man, I see so much new development now by uh, projects that were, as we, as people would call it, in the hood or, um, you know, a lot of different areas that weren't mm-hmm. so good at the time. And, man, seeing that now, a lot of those properties and areas are transforming to increase, like I said, my property value. So nice. I always say buy stuff that is not, um, you know, appealing to the eye, um, but that are in developing areas and good zip codes because that's going to turn into some money later. Nice. So... Developing areas, good zip codes, and also you're not just looking at the bones of the of the house that you're buying, yeah. but you're also looking at the surrounding environment yeah. that is coming up around it. Right. Um, and I think that's a nugget for a lot of millennials too, because mm-hmm. like you said, like we want the the look, the HGTV yeah. look, but when we're really thinking about um, buying our dream home versus accruing assets, right. we have to make sure that we're sacrificing now so that we can live the life that we want to have later. Absolutely. Um, talk to us about a little bit about your portfolio and the type of homes and real estate that you like to invest in. Um, is it mo- mostly multifamily, single family homes? What's, 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 some, what's the thing that you like the best? Um, really, man, um, deals that make sense, honestly. You know, um, I'm a big fan of multifamily because I like getting the bang for my buck. If I can get, you know, the double income, Mm -hmm. Um, or a single family that has uh, amenities that, you know, that I incorporate that could also uh, produce revenue, right? Um, Mm -hmm. I bought a foreclosure uh, that Mm. was pretty much, uh, it was was down bad, but it had a a pool in the backyard in in downtown, Mm. right? Uh, Foreclosure had to go through a bunch of hoops um, to get that property, but I knew it would produce... um, a substantial amount of income once I got it uh, nice. fixed up. So um, really, I honestly target deals that make sense, you know. But if I can get more doors through multifamily uh, duplexes, I have quite a few duplexes. Nice. Uh, but honestly, my next goal, bro, is I'm really just shooting uh, for the moon because I want to start going into uh, commercial, like apartment buildings. Mm-hmm. And um, no, I'm, I'm definitely manifesting that because that's, that's, that's going to happen next. Absolutely. I'm, I'm currently reading a book called You Squared. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a short read. And it, the, the, it, essentially, the, the whole book is about quantum leaps. Yeah. So understanding that even though you're at point A now, you don't have to go through steps B, C, D to get to Z. Right. Like you can make quantum leaps. So you can have no properties in January and 100 in November. Yeah. You can have um, 15 doors now and then go buy an apartment building that has another 50 doors Absolutely. in the apartment building just strictly based off of quantum leaping. And I think the the biggest analogy that I love from the book was about how you look at a fly and it's trying to get out the window and it's flying, it's flying, it's flying. Mm-hmm. And us, from our perspective, we understand that if the fly continues to try to get out the window and fight through the glass, eventually it's going to die and land on the windowsill. Right. Versus if you make a short pivot and turn to your left and fly out the door that's open, mm-hmm. you have a more, uh, you, you have a higher capable, higher probability of succeeding on the outside. So right. it's, the story in the book was really big for me because it's all about the pivot. Right. It's all about 
uh, broadening, broadening your vision and, and, and looking at the horizons from a different perspective so that you can make that quantum leap right. to another level. And I think that's what I like about uh, what you're doing with your real estate is because like you're not, you're not confusing uh, action with being busy. You actually out here getting yeah. to it and getting after it. Yeah. And yeah. I think uh, buying right is a, is a, is a, is a big nugget. Now you mentioned Airbnb. Yeah. What inspires you to get into Airbnb and then what, that's, that's question one. And then question two is, um, what do you like most about Airbnb versus having a, a, a permanent tenant no, in great, your property? Yeah, great question. Um, so it's funny, man. Um, I was living in uh, Richmond in uh, 2017 and I had a studio. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it was a City View loss. You know what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about? Yeah, 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 I remember. Um, and, bro, at the time I had credit card debt mm -hmm. um, and I was always going back and forth to D.C., uh, so I was I was really never there. And a lot of my boys was like, man, put your spot on Airbnb. So I gave it a shot. And, um, man, I saw the amount of money that was coming in. It was literally booked, like, every weekend. So I was Sheesh. always going. Yeah, you see. And this was something that I didn't own, right? Right. Um, and I just strategically just ran the play um, with one of my boys, and it just worked out. Nice. Right? So um, I knew if I had the opportunity. So you, show, you showed yourself proof of concept. Exactly. Yep. Spot on. Early on. Before this rental arbitrage thing that's mm -hmm. out there now, really, and um, you know, no disrespect to the term, but I was really living in that <laughs> before it was a right. thing on social media. Or Absolutely, Instagram, you know. Um, but to do it now with properties that I own, assets that I own, right? My um, equity in those properties are constantly increasing while I own the real estate, mm -hmm. right? Um, so now what I'm seeing is more money from a booking that I would make from a month of a long-term tenant, mm -hmm. right? And that, a long-term tenant, um, which, you know, I have some too, um, it, it could come with a potential headache, For right? sure. Of, you sure. know, constantly having wants or needs um, or, you know. Uh, <laughs> you can be a good tenant or a bad tenant. Yeah, yeah, good, a good tenant or a bad tenant. Yeah. But um, I've had good tenants, so I haven't really had that issue. But I've also had my experience with bad tenants too. But someone can book a weekend or a couple of days mm -hmm. and I'll make more than what I've made from a permanent a, tenant from a permanent tenant in a month, you know, exactly. Right. Um, and I'll see that over a weekend or a few days. Um, so I would rather have, you know, a property that may sit and is not using any sort of electricity or whatever that may not produce mm -hmm. income at that moment, because in the next minute or so I might get a booking that will pay off that pay the mortgage for the month, pay mm -hmm. all the, expenses and then sure. profit as well. So it's really a win-win uh, nice. situation. Nice. And um, that's what I've seen too, and myself in being interested in, in having an Airbnb property. That's what I like about it the most is your ability. It's really no ceiling on the amount of income that you can create from that one property because you can Absolutely. always modify the booking. You can always modify uh, the price per night, right? right? Now, when it comes down to your renovations and mm -hmm. the things that you're doing to really accrue and really assess uh, your income, what kind of things are you doing internally to the home to increase the value? Oh, no, great question, too. Um, really, man, I try to go into a house and do the bare, well, not the bare minimum, but, you know, as minimal as possible mm -hmm. to make it still look aesthetically uh, pleasing. But I find myself going in and really, man, gutting and doing complete renovation because it just turns out better that way, right? Mm -hmm. um, I like updating you know, all the drywall and sheetrock and just make things look more aesthetically pleasing than, rather than just putting lipstick on a pig. Because right? it would be something that you would want to live in too. Exactly. Right. And, you know, you know, when you take care of your properties up front and you spend more money, man, in, a, in the long term, you're going to save more money. Absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's, you're adding value to that property initially. So when you turn around and do a burr and you refinance, right, because mm -hmm. you can still refinance off of Airbnb as well, depending on what bank True. Um, or loan that you have. So I've done that to where I'm increasing my value from the beginning, right, mm -hmm. and I'm able to pull that money out and repeat the process. And, um, you know, one thing that I that I did in one of the larger homes that I had, bought it for 87.5, put about 70 That's in good. it, you know, about 150 all in, um, that house, man, really is worth in the three hundred, you know, thousand from a seventy-five thousand dollar property. From a, yeah, eighty-seven, 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 five. Yeah, seventy. Yeah, so wow. it's, it's worth double than what I have all in, right? Wow. That property did 
a hundred thousand dollars last year. One property. One one property. In Airbnb. Off Airbnb. Wow. Yeah, Airbnb VRBO, a hundred thousand dollars from 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 one house, man. Nice. And that was and that was a eighty seven five investment. Investment. <laughs> so so really, what it is is you buying whenever it comes to real estate. I know you're a big advocate for like you're buying your freedom yeah. essentially. Yeah. And you're using which real estate is is always been known for one of the. the the cornerstone of wealth building right. in America for decades and hundreds and hundreds of years. And I think understanding that now, when it comes down to, as we close up the conversation to uh, this pivot and you, you're doing all these things mm-hmm. with your real estate and you leaving corporate America, like what are some of the emotions that you went through, whether emotions that were on the higher vibration side or yeah. on the lowest vibration side, what was some of the emotions that you've been going through mentally um, since you've left corporate America and now going out and, and going out there and getting it on your own? Relief, bro. Peace. Okay. You know, um, happiness. Mm-hmm. Uh, purpose, bro. Like, I, I can really stand on, like, purpose. Nice. You know, um, my day-to-day now feels like my nine-to-five was never removed, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I, get, I, I hate getting caught up on this whole booked and busy wave. Mm-hmm. Um, my my goal is scaling. How do I scale a business to work itself, right? Um, how do I make that business sustain to where I can jump onto the next thing? Mm-hmm. Um, so no, bro. Like you said earlier, it's all about action. You know, when when things didn't work out at the job, um, I had a peace of mind mm-hmm. and I I prepared myself. I was you know, uh, I had I had readiness. I see so many people now from tech companies that are losing their jobs. Um, you know. They have miles to feed, you mm-hmm. know, um, and I'm not knocking that, but we have to start planning um, early, prior proper planning. Yeah, you know, um, my peace. So we 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 have to do these things of investing early on mm-hmm. to where you can get into a, a situation where you're able to self sustain. Um, and bro, I have I have no regrets right now. I'm living in my purpose. My mentor spoke spoke it into existence. Mm-hmm. I spoke it into existence, and mm-hmm. now I'm living in it. So. Um, it's not. It's not easy, but I'm, I'm taking. I'm taking it on, bro. Yeah, we, we're a proponent of you know what what we're doing and, and this life that we're living in. It's a proponent of the things that we think, feel, and say. Right. So it's essential that we consistently maintain these positive affirmations, the positive thinking, and these positive emotions. Mm-hmm. That's why when me and you talk offline, it's always about making sure that uh, we're on that vibration that matches mm-hmm. the things that we want out of yeah. life. Right. And so we always have to be conscious. And what I like about it the most is the accountability that comes in into play is like if we run into these negative experiences along our journey, we can quickly check ourselves and say, ah, what have I done right. to contribute to this certain sum or this certain in this equation? Right. Right. And so I think what you said this was essential as we wrap up is purpose um, and living in your purpose is like, you know, and that's how I feel whenever I'm doing this. Mm-hmm. It's like you, you're feeling like you're on you're doing what. With what God placed you on this earth to do, right? And you're really in tune with who you are with yourself, right? Um, you're able to get to know yourself more whenever you're on this journey of living in your purpose as well, absolutely. And you're focused more so on your overall well-being versus right. giving it away to someone else. You're really able to tap into yourself a lot more, right? Um, and my last question before we go, speaking about purpose, that made made me think of something was, how do you define the success? Um, man, success to me is not, is not money. Success is happiness, you know, um, success is peace of mind. Success is mental health. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know so many people, man, who are out here, uh, chasing what they think is success of climbing the corporate ladder and really, um, stressing themselves out, you know, um, and not in a mental capacity or space to where they're living in their purpose or they're fulfilled. Mm -hmm. They're doing something to get by, pay bills. Um, so success to me, man, is identifying what your purpose is, right? Mm-hmm. More than a nine to five stands on um, figuring out who you are, right? Absolutely. Figuring out who you are outside of your corporate job, your nine to five, whatever it is you do, and being fulfilled and, and sitting in that. Uh-huh. Um, so that to me is is success, bro. No, I love it. I love it. And, you know, success for me is just, you know, as Earl Nightingale says, it's, it's a progressive realization of a worthy ideal. So that goes for um, the woman that's a teacher and she yeah. wants to teach 
or the the mother that's a, that's a stay at home mom and she wants to be a stay at home mom and she yeah. does it at a high level yeah. and she's joyous and she's happy and she feels fulfilled when she does it. It's the doctor that shows up in the hospital and saves lives. It's the videographers. It's the photographers. Right. It's the creative, the content creatives. It's the influencers. It's anybody that's progressively realizing a worthy ideal, which means that that's an eternal conversation that you have with your with yourself. Right. And you actually have an emotional feeling and an emotional reaction to whenever you're living in your purpose. Right. And you're vibrating on that frequency. Right. So I think a lot of times where the outside people and the outside world is interested in identifying what success is for you. Right. But you have to come up with your own uh, definition and your own identity within self exactly. of what success is to you because only you can feel what feels for, what fulfillment feels like for you. Right. So it's, it's all about what you're progressively realizing within yourself um, that will progressively push you to the next level and to, and to progressively push you to your, your level of fulfillment. Right. Um, so, uh, no, I think this is a great conversation, man. I think... I think um, it's important for people to hear from people like you right. who have actually made the pivot. And it's not, they're not just listening from someone who is speaking about it from uh, an observational reality, right. but also they're hearing it from somebody who's doing it right now, who's in the process of doing it. Right. And so this right here, this message is for anybody um, that's out here who's thinking about a pivot. Uh, we have dozens and hundreds and thousands of examples of people who are out here taking that leap Right. who have prepared. And I think the biggest thing with Tim is that he prepared himself for this particular moment. Um, and I think it's important for us to always remain accountable in those actions so that exactly. when it's time for you to pivot from tech, pivot from teaching, teaching, uh, pivot from medicine, wherever, wherever you want to pivot from and whatever you see yourself doing, real estate, stocks, whatever it may be, you can do that because you prepared yourself to do it. Absolutely. So um, mental wellness, man, it's all about fusing mental health and financial literacy conversations and, and I just want to show uh, supreme gratitude for you for stopping through and really uh, sharing your story in regards to your pivot and yeah. entrepreneurship and um, what that what that what that's looking like for you. And so I think uh, people are going to be seeing a lot from you, um, you know, coming up and, and we're going to we're going to get you on again to talk more more about your brand more than a nine to five and what that actually means um, for you on a daily basis and how we can and mix that conversation in with some with some dope stuff. I'm looking forward to it. So bro. much love, man. Thank you, bro. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. Mental wellness. You put me on the Celestine prophecy. Nothing here is stopping me. Consciously or bodily. Low energy don't bother me. Love is my priority. So my vibrations 444 sonically. My brain working out. Meditation, my cardio. They hit it from us in the books you provide.